Today, we are going to look at a body vis brain builder, about the glands of the skin, and acne. The integumentary system, or integument, is composed of the skin and its derivatives, which are glands, hair, and nails. This brain builder discusses the glands of the skin and how some of these glands are linked to the common skin disorder termed acne. Glands of the skin, also termed cutaneous glands, develop as outgrowths of the epithelium of the skin's epidermis. As cutaneous glands develop, they often extend deep into the dermis of the skin. Cutaneous glands fall into two different categories, pseudoriferous and sebaceous glands. Pseudoriferous glands are also called sweat glands. There are two types of pseudoriferous glands. One type produces a thick, cloudy substance that is responsible for the body odor associated with sweat. These coiled tubular glands release their secretions into hair follicles and are most numerous in the axilla, areolar of the breasts, and perianal region. A second, more numerous type of pseudoriferous gland is not associated with hair follicles and releases its secretion directly onto the surface of the skin. These pseudoriferous glands are distributed over the entire body, with the palms of the hands and soles of the feet having the highest number of these glands. The clear secretion produced by these glands is termed sweat. Sweat assists in the thermal regulation of the body and the excretion of water and electrolytes. Sebaceous glands, also called oil glands, are typically associated with hair follicles. The glands' short ducts empty directly into the hair follicle. The waxy, oily secretory product, termed sebum, is released into the hair follicle. Sebum functions to inhibit the growth of bacteria within the hair follicle and on the skin surrounding the follicle. It also lubricates the hair and skin adjacent to the hair follicle. Acne is the most common dermatologic condition within the United States, affecting nearly 50 million people per year. The vast majority of people affected by acne are between the ages of 12 and 24 years old. There are two types of acne blemishes, non-inflammatory and inflammatory. Non-inflammatory blemishes do not cause swelling of the surrounding skin tissue, are limited to the skin pore, and typically do not cause scarring. These type of blemishes are whiteheads, also termed closed comedons, and blackheads, also termed open comedons. There are four types of inflammatory acne blemishes. Papules present as bumps under the skin that are raised in appearance and pink in color. Pustules, also termed pimples, form when a bacteria infection of a pore has caused a painful, red, raised area with a circular white center. A pustule is filled with a collection of white blood cells termed pus. Nodules are harder and more painful than a papule and extend deeper into the epidermis of the skin. This blemish affects the skin below the surface and may result in scarring or pitting of the skin. Cysts are the most severe form of acne blemish. Here, the bacterial infection has affected deeper regions of the epidermis and dermis of the skin. Pus from the bacterial infection has collected deeper into the skin, resulting in a painful and rather large lumps. This type of blemish also often results in scarring or pitting of the skin. Next, we will look at the causes and treatments for acne and finally, give a patient example. Acne is caused by the clogging of a skin pore or hair follicle with sebum and the cellular fragments. Finding the correct treatment for acne can be a journey. Typically, it is recommended to try treating acne with over-the-counter non-prescription acne treatments for several weeks prior to seeing a physician. In addition to the over-counter medications, washing the affected areas with a gentle cleanser avoiding irritants such as sunscreen, oily or greasy cosmetics, or acne concealers, and avoiding picking or touching the affected areas can help. If such treatments do not produce the desired results, a dermatologist should be consulted. 
a prescription medication or other treatments intended to reduce the bacterial infection and associated redness and swelling will often be recommended by the physician. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You receive your patient's file and take a look. Age, 17. Sex, female. Chief complaint, inflammatory acne. This is the second time your patient has visited you about her acne. The first time, you recommended some over-the-counter face wash and discussed different tips like avoiding makeup and any skin irritants before looking at any prescription medications or treatments. After several weeks of trying this, her acne has improved only slightly. However, your patient is hoping for more significant results. You examine her skin, and based on the different types of inflammatory acne she is facing, you prescribe a topical antibiotic to hopefully help with the bacteria and discuss a morning and nighttime skincare routine with a plan to see your patient in eight weeks to see how this treatment is working. This is a classic example of acne. Thank you for watching this Brain Builder video. Please like and subscribe to our BodyViz channel. Or, if you're new at BodyViz, check out our other anatomy resources and schedule a demo at bodyviz.com.